we are. So there we go. <laughs> we were driving northwards on twin dams, and this is where the monkeys were alarm calling. And there's our little boy tucked into some very thick grass, and he's looking very sleepy and sorry for himself. Shame, are you also cold? The two boys this morning are in the sorry states, actually. They both are in the same way. We're kind of tucked in and rounded up and, and sort of trying to stay nice and warm on a coolish morning. So both of them are not far from one another but still in the same kind of pose. It's quite funny actually to see the two of them. But little Tumba you can see his little green eyes opening every now and then. Maybe if I just roll slightly forward for you Senzo so that you don't have that grass in your way. How is... We're just trying to go forward slightly. Now Rusty's obviously squeaking, but there's his beautiful green eye that we know of, and he's just curled up. And he's in the same area once again that we've been seeing him the last few days. He's in a very similar place. It seems as though he has not moved from this section. And I wonder, shame, if he's waiting for Mom to come back and get him, and that's why he's patiently sitting in the same place, not moving around. And yet, well, we know Mom is on food and has not come here, so she, I don't think is too concerned about him anymore and has decided that she's going to start the separation process. I, I would imagine she'll come past every now and then but I, I don't think she's really too worried about looking after the little Tumba anymore. I think she's leaving him on his own to fend for himself now and it's going to be a tough tough time of it. We know that little Hosanna had a bit of a sort of wobbly couple first months trying to get things going and trying to find his way and to see how it is to be a male on your own and well I think Tumba's going to have a very similar situation to Hosanna. It's going to take him a bit of time until he's going to be hunting big animals and he's going to have a, a tough time of sort of working out where to go and how to how to spend his time but the nice thing is is that he's here on Juma and that means that I don't think he's going to move around too much off Juma and we'll probably have him most days I would say for the next couple of weeks unless Tandi comes and fetches him. You can see not quite as full as what Hosanna is. He's got a little bit less of a tummy on him so he's a little bit on the skinnier side and, and that will be the case for the first little bit as he kind of works out what he's got to do and how he's got to go about things he will be slightly on the skinnier side than what Hosanna is for now but that will change once he works things out and the fact that he's caught a scrub here already and he kind of roughly knows what he's doing and he's starting to stalk warthogs and he's starting to stalk Nyala and all these kind of things he will eventually find a way to find food and, and to be able to get himself some sort of a meal so he's going to be just fine I think he'll survive off everything else until the, until then but really nice to to see the two of them so close and they've spoiled us these two boys have been our savior really and they've provided ample amounts of time with them they've we've seen a lot of very special sightings with both of them and they have been the source of our leopard luck really we've you know if we think about it we have seen a lot of individuals but these two have been the main stars in our sort of cat streak that we're on here at Juma at the moment Mr. P from Canada, you're asking if it's unheard of that two male leopards would form a coalition. Yes, as far as I know, I've never heard of a coalition of leopard, but I always wish there was one. I think it would be quite cool to see. But um, no, as far as I know, they've never been a coalition. I, I've seen males kind of been quite relaxed with one another and walk around fairly close to one another. And there's a bit, a bit of growling and a bit of hissing, but nothing too major, especially young males. But never... A proper coalition that will lie next to one another, that will move around together and defend one another, that I've never seen. It's just not in their nature, not in their instinct. Their instinct is to be solitary individuals. And so, you know, if you think how many male litters have been born where it's brothers that have stayed together all their life that separate, it's just in, nat in their instinct is to, to separate off and go on their own. So, nope, not as far as I know. It would be cool though. Imagine Hosanna and Tamba was our first leopard coalition. That would be awesome. I think it would be. They would be a serious coalition. They'd be both big boys, and the dark eyes and light eyes would really. You know, the ladies would have a tough time to choose between these two boys, and it would be quite interesting to see what would go on. But in all likelihood, no, they're not going to really go after one another. Now, since I don't know if you can get this little bird that is right next to me here, that's very cute, and they're not a bird we can get on camera very often. But just here, oh no, it's jumping around all over the show. But it's still there. It's just going to be tough to get on camera because of all the branches that are in the way. Has it flown away? No, it's still there. There it is. So just bouncing around in this tree is a long-billed crombeck. There it is, bottom right. 
bottom right there it's coming into the middle so there's a little long billed crombeck that is jumping and they're not easy birds to get on screen because as you can see they sort of bounce around between trees and they're easy to identify because of that orangish tummy and then the really kind of a lack of a tail they really don't have much of a tail at all and a very distinctive little call and it's coming out slowly but surely on the left side of the tree hopefully it'll bounce its way into a bit more of an open clearing there it goes it's just on that branch that big thick branch there there it is so you can see there's really no tail to speak of on that bird it's a tiny little tail and why I was saying it's difficult to get on camera is because look at how it bounces it just doesn't sit still for more than one second it's really kind of sits on a branch and then off it goes onto another one except when another bird calls and it stops to listen and there we go that's at least a better view of our long billed crombeck beautiful little birds like I say nice very nice and this is the thing when you sit with animals and you sit for quite a period of time this is when you'll then find little birds coming in and, and spending time around you because you